All right. Welcome back. So our real quest in this chapter is just to find a map of the mines and enter the mines. That's it. That's all we have to do. And the map of the mines is actually in a safe here in the bank. This is one of the longest chapters in the game. As you would imagine, getting into the safe in the bank is going to take a lot of work. So let's go back in and talk to little Miss Raw Fish here. Because we need friends in this chapter. Hi, Sushi. Hi, Brian. How's it going? Did you find out anything else? Um, I'm working on it. You see, there's something I want to talk to you about. Everything. It's about your great-grandfather's mine. Sure, what is it? Do you know your way through the mine shafts to reach the Hopi village? Me? Not a chance. I've never gone into that old mine. I thought you might have an old map of the mine. No, I don't have any maps of it. Let me think. I guess that if a map exists, it would be in the town bank. Probably inside the safe. Do you really think the mine ran dry because of the Hopi Medicine Man's curse? Well, I neither believe it nor deny it. What I do know is that the mine ran out of gold, even though such a thing seemed totally impossible days before. Not something very normal, don't you think? Could you tell me the whole story of... No. Again? Well, it's this village. But it, however, okay. not real. So what... Ian, the Ian, J, look, they the whole thing. What do you... What have them that talk of as once? Sorry about that. Why did Kevin, Wrecker, and you come live out here? It was my idea. I felt the need for total isolation so I could devote myself to my greatest passion. They had similar concerns. So here we are. So, what's your passion? Computers and the whole world of technology surrounding them. I'm pretty good at it, you know? So I moved to a place with no electricity. I'm going to continue on my search. Thanks for all your help, Sushi. See you later. See ya, and good luck. Okay, so apparently I just can't do anything in the hotel but talk to Sushi, which is fine. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to explore everywhere, talk to everybody, and pick up everything we can. Let's see. Way at the end, I see a cell, and <gasps> I can't believe my eyes. There's <gasps> a dead body. Oh, man. That guy must have been rotting away for a hundred years. I wonder whether that poor devil died inside there, or if he'd already kicked the bucket before they stuck him in there. It's locked shut. Which makes sense. That's why the guy couldn't get out. Let's see, check for anything I can There's pick up. There's some old wanted signs up, offering a reward for capturing the bad guys. It must be for that stove over there. All right. I don't think anyone will need them to light up the stove. Five nice logs. Hmm, might come in handy. Man. Those shorts. I well, look, they've got all those pockets. I know adventure games. You can't really make fun of it, but I'm going to anyway. An old frayed hat, a couple of pages from an old newspaper, and an oil lamp. Ah, uh, nothing of this will help me out. I like that he knows I'm not that. Not interested in that. Let's see. Well, I'm no bounty hunter, and even if I were, I'm afraid all of these guys have been six feet under for at least a century. There aren't any weapons left, just the chain that held them up. I can't. It's fixed to the cabinet. I don't think I'll need it anyway. Uh, I'm... Luckily, he is a child prodigy, and he knows exactly what we will and won't need. So apparently, we can only take the firewood from here for now. Okay, let's make a real clean Eastwood entrance. The glass is shattered. But you can still read the word saloon. Ha! This is gross. It's covered with mud and reeks like sewage. Clint Eastwood? What kind of name is that? Hey, how cool. An automatic door opening system. And they say the Old West was wild and dangerous. Well, well, well. This looks like a botanical garden. I think we just found somebody else's passion. Mm. 
Here we go, my favorite part of the game. I remember a similar plant from a movie I once saw, and it was carnivorous. Every time I look at it, I think it might start dancing and singing at any moment. Every time I... Forget that, I don't trust that plant one bit. I'd rather pet the head of a rabid Rottweiler. That's it, Little Shop of Horrors reference. I like that it's now labeled meat-eating plant. Needed by all big plant lovers. Now, I'm not saying I don't like plants, but I can't waste any time watering them right now. <laughs> Apparently there's a little issue with the subtitles. Nice little tree, but I've heard it takes lots of time and energy to care for them properly. Mm -mm. Better leave it where it is. I wouldn't be able to give it the love it deserves right now. Alright, so... Ooh. Let's see what I find here. Do, do, do. It's a sort of shed stocked with a wide range of gardening tools. I wish you could see it in here. It's so cool. Seeds, tools, chemicals, that kind of stuff. Okay, well, is there anything in there? It's so cool in here, Let's you guys. See. Hmm, these pruning shears may be of use. It's going to help me break into a safe. Hey, hey, pal. Hi, who are you? My name's Brian. Brian Basco. I'm Kevin, but everyone calls me Saturn. Nice to meet you, BB. BB? Those are your initials, right? I could just tell you go by BB right away. Yeah, it was extensively. Logical, with your name. Well, to tell you the truth, uh, no one's ever called. So tell me, BB, you planning on moving to these parts? Have you spoken with Sushi about this? What kind of artist are you? No, no, I, I don't plan on staying. I, I'm just passing through. Oh, well, that's something unusual, isn't it? I mean, not many people come around here just for the heck of it. Well, I'm trying to find the remains of a Hopi village. The old Indian village? Yeah, I've heard of it. Can you tell me how to get there so I can skip this chapter? Do you have any idea where exactly it might be located? Actually, I don't, which is odd because I'm quite familiar with the area. I often go out exploring to find raw materials for my inventions, and I've never come across the slightest sign of that Hopi village. Do you know of anyone who could tell me the story of that village? Hmm, let me think. I don't know. I think Sushi may have some documents from her great-grandfather. They might mention the Hopi village. I am not asking course, Sushi. Of hasn't got a clue. Although you never know, and uh, Mama Dorita could know something. That story about Sushi owning Douglasville is true then, huh? Oh yes, the whole town belonged to her great grandfather. Please don't tell me the story. Then it was passed down from oh, generation God. to generation until Sushi inherited it from her father. I met Sushi on the internet through a chat room. We got along really well and became friends quite fast. When she proposed the idea of moving away to this town to live at peace with our creative spirits, well, I didn't think twice. To be honest, I don't usually think once. I haven't met Rector yet. Well, he's out of town. He told me he was going on an expedition in search of plants and roots. When you meet him, you'll see what a swell guy he is. He joined up with us to move out here so he could devote himself fully to his great passion, botanical gardening. What do you know about Mama Dorita? Well, I've only seen her on one occasion. I got her to give me an appointment to see if she could do something about my lack of inspiration. It didn't work. According to her, I lacked faith. But really, I didn't think swallowing a live spider bathed in coyote brains was going to solve my problems. Really, that usually creates more problems than it solves. Uh, that thing you're working on is totally interesting. This ensemble? I assure you, it's not one of my best works. My inspiration hasn't been up to par lately, you know? I just don't seem to be getting any ideas. This workshop's impressive. I see that besides an artist, you're quite an inventor. Yes, I like to think of myself as a modern-day Leonardo da Vinci. I combine art and science in my creations, because both combined are my whole raison d'etre. I'll let you get back to your work, Saturn. Au revoir! Adieu. All right. Let's see what we can pick I'd up. Anyway, I'd have to ask Saturn for it first. Hmm, what is this thing? Maybe it's some sort of scale. Or perhaps a cart for moving heavy items. I really can't tell. 
Let's find out. Let's see how in the world this works. Whoa! Hey, what have you done? Get your hands off my catapult. Sorry, I didn't know what it was. Well, the next time you don't know what something is, don't touch it. You wasted a whole unopened bucket of paint. Damn the day I decided to build that catapult. Hey, chill out, dude. I won't touch anything else. I hope not. I'm sure I won't use that catapult to solve puzzles later. It's used to control the crane located on the central beam in the ceiling. I can swear I've seen that statue somewhere before. Well, I can't tell you because I can't see it. Oh, well, we got a little thing tucked away over here. It's a sanding block. Kevin must have dropped it. So I'm gonna steal it. All right, better not leave it lying there. It's much safer in my pocket. I'm sure Kevin will be grateful if I return it to him. I don't know that I'm going to return it to him. I mean, I guess I can try. I don't know what's inside, but it looks like it might hold gasoline. No, I don't know what it contains. Nice set. Yes, sirree. I can't think of any tool I might need. You're a tool. Hey, Saturn. What? Uh, How nope. Did you get back? Uh, Same conversation options we had before. Can I give this no, back to him? No, I might need it later on. Oh, <laughs> look at that. The adventure game spirit lives on. I better give this back to him. Yeah, I better keep it. Alright, I'm gonna walk over here and take a look at this wagon. If I recall, I need to do something with one of these wagons. And that's the only one that pops up, so... This must have been a supply wagon because it has some sort of strap attached to an iron ring at the edge. And there are more similar rings at each end of the wagon on both sides. I bet the strap passed through all of those rings over the goods to keep them from moving around on those dusty, bumpy old roads. We are a child prodigy. It's tied to one of the iron rings. I can't tear it off. I bet you I can cut it off. Okay, I'll cut right next to the iron ring. That way I'll get most of the whole strap. I'm glad I don't have to live my life like an adventure game character. Must be six to eight yards long. I'm sure it'll come in handy. Every time you see something slightly interesting, or even not interesting, you have to put it in your pocket. I can't fast forward to the liquor store, so I probably can't go in there, but he's going to tell me that I can't go in there. Impossible. I'd have to remove the boards on the door. All right, so I need some kind of hammer or something. Did he have a hammer? We'll fast forward real quick and just double check. He's got a tie rack, because he totally looks like the kind of guy who wear a tie. Get out of my own way here. There are hammers galore. Nice set. Yes, I know I you're you're a tool nerd. I want a hammer. All right. I guess either I can't get one from him or I can't get one now. So for now, we're going to have to go sans booze. Whoa! The bank sure is a mess. <laughs> There's a can of paint we shot. I see the locomotive really wrecked the place when it derailed and smashed into the bank. Yeah, a train crashing into a building will do that. This is really run down. All I see are old papers covered in dust. Then there's that metallic object down there. Yeah, I see the metallic object too. Hmm, not a clue what this is, but it seems to be in pretty good shape despite years of sitting on that shelf. Okay. I'll take it. Whoa! It's a this stapler. Looks like a stapler. Quite rudimentary it is. Definitely a model from the 19th century. 
I'd better take the staples that were lying next to the stapler. They look similar to the rivets used by cobblers. Nerd. I bet this was JT Douglas's desk. BD. Bank of Douglasville, I suppose. Not an item of interest. Alright, I guess that's all we can take from the bank here. And you'll notice we can't even see a safe. But... A big piece of the floor is missing. A blunt object must have fallen down and made that hole. I don't see why I would want to go in there. Yeah, there is a basement. Which is probably where the safe is, but Brian's not willing to go down there just yet. I can't imagine the havoc that locomotive wreaked the day it derailed and annihilated everything in its path. Huh. Reminds me of a model I got for Christmas one year. Yep, I wrecked it too. It's almost exactly alike. There's the smokestack, and to the left is a spout where you fill the water tank, and further to the left is the whistle next to the engineer's cap. No need to. It won't open or close. The water goes straight into the hole left around the valve in the inlet. That's where you put water into the tank. I love those big smokestacks on old steam trains from the 1800s. It whistles by letting steam out. It was hooked up to the engineer's cab using a sort of rope that he would pull on when he wanted to sound it. This has been Trains for I Nerds. I tried to go in through the hole next to the broken part of the roof, but I'd almost rather go up to the side and enter through the window there. Okay, let's see what's in here. I don't know what the two smaller ones on the top and the bottom indicate, but the larger two in the middle... Well, the upper one is a pressure gauge for the boiler, and the lower one indicates the level of water in the tank. That's the wheel used to increase pressure in the boiler. It has no firewood or other fuel inside. Ooh, we can do that. We can fix that. Well, all right. These logs will make first-class fuel. <laughs> he just pulled them out of his stomach. Three, four, and five. Although the fifth one looked kind of wimpy, and they all looked uniform in our inventory. So yeah, we're going to get this train up and running. I mean, not right now, obviously. I think with one big leap, I can reach the window. <laughs> Yo! Alright, so we have explored everywhere in town, and I think we've picked up everything we can in town for now. But there's a whole world here. We have an unknown place and an unknown place. Let's go to the crater. Wow! That crater is really big. Jeez! Someone's camping down there, right at the edge of the crater. I'll go down and see who it is. Prepare to meet... Hello? Somebody who's quite a character. I don't know how else to describe him. Hey, friend. Hi. Yo! Nah! It's impossible! I can't get them to open the door! Them? Who are they? Them! You know! Extraterrestrial! Oh. Yeah. Oh, goody. Speaking of which, who are you and what are you doing here? Are you looking for them, like me? No, no. Uh, my name's Brian and I'm searching for an old Indian village. Brian? You know the meaning of that name? No, I don't. What is it? I haven't a clue. But my name is Joshua. And it means liberation. That's something to think about, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Uh, that's real interesting. I know. Well, now that I think about it, they must have sent you here to help make my communication machine work. Really, my friend? No one sent me. Just because you're not conscious of it, doesn't mean they didn't bring you here. Where's your other shoe? Either I'm way off here, or just a few days ago, you never would have imagined you'd be here at the foot of this crater, right? 
Well, that is true, but it's all because of... So, I was right. See? That's how they do things. That's something to think about, isn't it? Uh, yeah, and we're going to have a nice long chat with this eccentric gentleman. You wouldn't know where I can find the remains of that Hopi village I'm looking for, would you? The Indian village? No, I don't have the slightest clue. But as soon as I communicate telepathically with Trample, I can ask. These aliens know everything. So what brought you here? To this crater, I mean. This is not just any crater. People just blindly believe whatever those so-called modern scientists tell them. They say that the crater was formed by a crashing meteorite that fell here millions and millions of years ago. That's a bunch of baloney, I say. However, I know the truth. The crater was formed when a Trantorian ship landed here. You know, that's what you told me when I arrived. Yeah? What? What door were you referring to when you said you couldn't get them to open it? To the dimensional door between Earth and Trantor! That's why they came here that time they landed with their spacecraft. They're setting up dimensional doors on hundreds of planets all over the universe. And the one on Earth is right here. A total trip, huh, dude? What is the communication machine exactly? It's all this stuff I have set up on top of the trailer. I built it myself and christened it with the name Communication Machine because I plan on using it to open the dimensional door and come in physical contact with the Trantorian. Why did you tell me to help you make it run? Is it broken? Yeah, after getting here and setting everything up, I ran into some bad luck. It had hardly been running for an hour when the machine ran out of energy and stopped working. I took off the plate covering the rotor and checked out the battery that makes it spin. But I can't find what's wrong. The battery looks like it's in one piece. I just don't get it. All I can tell is that if the rotor doesn't spin, it doesn't produce energy. And without any energy, the machine is useless hunk of junk. So, in addition to getting a derailed train to run, we're going to fix an alien communication device. How does the machine work exactly? Basically, the machine is a sort of amplifier that can emit sounds at a specific frequency. It has a keyboard attached with seven buttons to play the seven musical notes. Using my dun, 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 dun. I have been told that a way to activate the dimensional door is to play a combination of five notes at the frequency revealed only to me. And anybody who it watched Close Encounters of the Third Kind... What's that panel of spotlights behind there for? Each spotlight falls with one of the musical notes. When you play the note, the matching spotlight turns on. But the truth is, they don't really do anything. What I mean is, you don't need them to activate the dimensional door. But I saw something like them in a movie, and I thought the communication machine looked much more hip with them. Okay then, let's move on to a new topic. What other matters would you like me to enlighten you about? Forget about it. It doesn't matter. Oh. What's that strange device you're wearing on your head? You mean my telepathic helmet? Yeah, that's what I meant. It's a telepathic empowerment device that multiplies a human being's telepathic abilities two or three thousand fold. That's I pretty use it unspecific. To with Trantor. You got to be careful. When you wear this, you run the risk of going crazy because a lot of ideas flash through your brain. There are millions of telepathic messages people give us all the time without realizing it. Fortunately, I can clearly distinguish telepathic messages from Trantor and run no risk of losing my marbles. Is the helmet what told you that it was a good idea to wear a shirt that doesn't come all the way down to your pants? Because, buddy, you were not built for a midriff. Well, I'll let you get back to work. We can talk later. Whenever you want, kid. All right. I think I can fix part of this machine now. Nice device. No, no. I better leave the thing where it is. If that's the rotor, I've got this leather strap. It won't get anywhere. I don't know what to do. Now, why would I want to stay... Okay, clearly I'm out of my mind. I thought I remembered doing no, this. No, I can't take Joshua's motorbike. It's one of those dirt bikes that'll go just about anywhere. Well, 
Where's the rotor? I thought I, I remembered. I don't know what to do. I don't. Okay, apparently I have completely lost my mind and I don't know how to fix this machine. So I'm going to try passing some time. Joshua! Yeah. Um, I want to get the machine. I want to fix the machine. Something. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. How can I help you make the communication machine work? Hmm. I'm not sure. The thing is, we need energy for the machine, and the energy is produced when the rotor spins. Okay. Okay then. Let's what? I can make the rotor spin. I've got this leather strap. I could staple it. Yeah, I know. I just keep leaving and coming back, but I'm trying to... It's one of those... If I get it to spin... There. Communic there. Now it's, lo now it's labeled as a rotor. Up until this point, it was just a machine. Now it's a rotor. So now I can interact with it. Hmm. Yes, we can place the strap between the back wheel of the motorcycle Thank you. and the rotor on the communication machine. That way, while the wheel is lifted off the ground, I can start up the motorcycle and make the spinning wheel turn the rotor, providing energy to the communication machine. There's just one detail missing. I have to join the ends of the strap together to get the invention to work. Man, if only I had a way to of do course. that. I can use the stapler to join the ends of the belt together. Something that three seconds ago he said he wouldn't go. do. I only had three staples, but I think it'll hold. All right, let's see if I can put this in place. Hmm, this looks like a job for Joshua. If he could build that crazy machine, he must be pretty clever with his hands. I've got it. I'll give Joshua the strap, explain my idea to him, and have him get his hands all dirty. I'm only a child prodigy. I couldn't possibly put a leather strap on a rotor. Joshua? Yes? I came up with an idea to make your communication machine work. Seriously? That is excellent! Explain it to me, boy. Look, I thought you could place a strap between the back wheel of the motorcycle and the rotor of your machine. Afterward, we rev up the motorcycle's engine and put it into gear. The wheel will pull on the strap as it spins and... Oh, yes! I understand now! Great idea, young man. You're not as dumb as you looked after all. Just one thing. Do you have that strap? I've got it. You'll put it in place, won't you? Oh, yes. That is right up on my alley. Just leave the strap next to the motorcycle, and I'll do it in five minutes. The thing is, right when you talked to me, I had just tuned in a telepathic message from Trantor that I simply must decipher before I forget it. Ah, uh, as you wish. But don't take too long. Also, this game doesn't really like to change the environment while we're looking. Well, let's hope he can get this show on the road. I'm dying to check whether my idea works. So, we're just going to leave. This model's a bit outdated. People use those igloo-style tents nowadays. And go back. Oh, man! I see Joshua hasn't put the strap in place yet. I'm gonna have to talk to him. I'm gonna have to give that crazy man what for. Joshua? Yes? Yeah? How come you haven't put the strap in place yet? Look, there is one small problem. Logically, I can't put in the strap without taking apart the motorcycle wheel. And I can't take apart the motorcycle wheel because I need a number 10 wrench, which I don't have. Oh, brother. Now I get it. I've been such an idiot. For a child prodigy. I shouldn't have joined the ends of the strap until I put it on the wheel. The bad thing is, I can't cut the strap again and restaple it, since it'd be too short. What's worse, I don't have any staples left. Okay, Joshua, don't worry. I'll get us a number 10 wrench and bring it to you. Okay, I trust you, sonny boy. You like how he was reading me the riot act for stapling it together? 
Well, you have to. The game won't proceed otherwise. You have to screw it up. Luckily, I think I might know who could have a number 10 wrench. Hey, Saturn! What? Uh... You see, mon ami, there's something I wanted to ask you. If it's in my power to help. Could you lend me a number 10 wrench? Sure. Take it from the set of tools hanging on the wall. How much? I did. Let's see. Here on the left are the wrenches. Shoot! Just the one I need is missing. The number 10. Hey, Saturn. What's up now, BB? The number 10 wrench is missing. Impossible. It's got to be... Hey, wait, you're right. I used it before and left it here in my pocket. Here. <laughs> Your reflexes are shot, you know? Well, don't worry. The wrench must be down there, in the street. You just have to go down and get it. Yeah. Thanks, man. Who throws a wrench at somebody? And for somebody who's such a big basketball fan, I kind of expected him to have some skills. I don't see the wrench anywhere. Ugh. I'm afraid I figured out where it is. It's fallen into that disgusting trough. Okay, who's the sucker that's gonna stick his hand in there? You are. Sorry, but I'll have to find some other way to get that out of there. Because I am not sticking my hand in. Man, it's Gabriel Knight 3 all over again. Hero telling me what he will and won't do. It's got dirt inside, but nothing has been planted in it. Okay. Maybe I'll find something to plan in it. Or maybe I have a different plan in mind. Since he won't stick his hand in there, I'm just gonna have to, like, hope I can knock everything out of it. No, this just must hold go outside. The oh. The tank is pretty large. It must hold at least 50 gallons. Dude's got a pretty big water machine. I'm sure that won't come up later. Yeah, that's a good idea. No, it's not. It's I'll a crazy the idea. On the trough, and with a bit of luck, the wrench will come flying out. It's a stupid idea. This game is full of stupid ideas. I can't tell if it worked from up here. I need to go down and check. I'm one flight up, and I couldn't see if a metal object flew out of a trough. And also, when we picked it up, the game gave us the hint that we would plant something in it, and instead we used it to do this. Great! There's that dumb wrench! It's finally mine! All clean and ready to take to Joshua. How is it clean? It was just in the sewage trough. So again, we're not going to finish this chapter in this video. I'm probably going to go for another 10 minutes because we haven't gotten to Mama Dorita yet. Uh, but yeah, we're not going to finish this chapter in this episode. It's just, it's the biggest chapter of the game. Joshua? Yes? I've got the number 10 wrench. Oh, excellent. Leave it by the strap. I'll take care of it right away. But give me five minutes. I was just receiving a telepathic message from Trantor. Oh. All right, whatever. Okay, let's hope Joshua puts my plan into action. Where? Why'd you have to walk back over here? All right, so we leave. We come back. Great, now the strap is on. Joshua? Yes? I see you put that strap on. Did you see if the invention works? Sorry, kid. We're out of luck. The motorcycle doesn't have one drop of gas. Oh left. my god. Just what I needed. <laughs> Wait, let's not get desperate. We can find some gasoline. That's what I like to see. Initiative. 
I know you will get it. And with your help, I'll achieve my goal. I really feel like I'm putting a lot of effort into this puzzle for no reason. I mean, I just want to get the map from the Douglasville Bank. Why am I helping this guy with his whole alien communication device? This house looks Mexican, and there's a huge guy in the doorway. I don't know. He seems to be keeping guard, but he looks like a nice guy. I'll go talk to him to see what happens. Oh god, he's cupping himself. That's not good. Howdy, partner. What brings you to these parts? What do you want from Mama Dorita? Mama Dorita? No, look, I, I'm searching for the remains of a Hopi village. I know it was around this area somewhere. By the way, my name is Brian. An Indian village? Yeah, Hopi to be exact. Well, I reckon there's an old ghost town called Douglasville, and now there's a bunch of hippies living there. No, I've been through there already. Douglasville is not the town I'm looking for. Thanks anyway, though. Well, pal, I never heard of any other abandoned villages around here. You think Mama Dorita could help me? Sorry, but I doubt it. Mama Dorita helps people with other types of problems. Other types of problems? Yeah, she's in contact with the other side. The other side? You mean she talks to dead people? Yup, she's mastered the arts of voodoo, Susang, and Santeria. And she's a healer, too. I'd love to meet her. Maybe she might know something about the Hopi village. No way. Mama Dorita doesn't do that kind of thing. Look for a good archaeologist, pal. I knew one, but he was murdered. He's pretty intimidating, but I think he's a nice guy. How would you like for your job to be to stand all day in front of a shack in the middle of a desert where nobody visits? Friend! Oh, God. What's up, kid? I see you like gum. You're always chewing some. Oh, that's not gum. It's menthol chewing tobacco. I can't resist it, you know. Helps me pass the time. What did you do before working for Mama Dorita? Well, I don't like to think about my past. All I can tell you is that I'm not real proud of some of the things I did. Luckily, Mama Dorita came into my life like a shining light and gave it all new meaning. Now my only mission is to serve Mama Dorita. I'd like to see Mama Dorita. I told you that can't be. She can't help you with your problem, pal. I'm sorry. But I've, I've got a lot of problems. Troubles, the ones Mama Dorita can fix up. Don't you hesitate to come around. Man, I got all well, kinds of problems. I'm just going my way here. All right, me too. I'm going to pick up this rare and interesting stone. Well, well, isn't that unusual? It's got a hole in the middle, like a donut. Okie dokie. I like it. You think it was the work of an artist and not just a rock I happened to find on the ground. By the look of that bucket, I'd say it hasn't been used for quite a while. This really improves the ambiance, just like that shrunken head on the pole. After all, Mama Dorita is some sort of sorceress. And any self-respecting sorceress would decorate her place with this kind of stuff. How do we know she's a sorceress? I just assumed that she was some kind of psychic. Alright, so we need gas for the machine, although I'm still not entirely clear on why we're trying to fix the alien communication device. But it's the only thing I seem to be able to make progress on right now. If it's gas, I could really use some. Hey, Saturn! What? You see, mon ami, there's something I wanted to ask you. If it's in my power to help. Can I take that tank you've got over there? It's filled with gasoline, isn't it? Yes, it's gasoline, but I'm afraid I can't give it to you. You see, when we came to this town, we agreed on a set of rules. One was that we didn't even want to hear about money. Nobody buys or sells anything here. What we do is use the noble old system of bartering. If you want something of mine, you have to give me something of yours in exchange. If what you want is a loan of something that's not perishable, no problem. We're just as generous as the next guy. Which is why he gave me the wrench. If it's something you can't return because using it means it will disappear, well, in that case, you have to give something in exchange. 
I don't think I have to tell you that's the way it'll work with that tank of gasoline. You just did okay, tell me. Okay, I get it. And what might I offer you in exchange for your tank of gas? Hmm, look, one thing has occurred to me. You could give me a piece of art you've made. I love collecting works by other artists, you know. It's quite enriching. How much you... Uh, did... It's an oddly specific set of rules. Okay, we're going to try giving him this stone. Because remember, when we picked it up, it said it looked like an artist All made right. it. All right. I don't want to give it up. But it's a rock. Maybe I can get Saturn to exchange it for the take of gas. Saturn. Hey, Saturn. I brought you a first-rate work of art. It's a small sculpture I've carved in stone. Hmm, what does it portray? What does it portray? Uh, well, it's, uh, it, it portrays the fragility of, of mankind and the savage environment that surrounds us. Oh yeah, that's what I thought. It's a lovely piece and I hate to lose it, but I give it to you in exchange for the tank of gas. Well, I really understand the concept and all, and I like it, but it seems like an unfinished work, like a diamond in the rough. What a work pretty bitch! A bit more, and we'll talk. Whatever you say, you're the big artist. Shoot, it didn't work. All right, so we got to do some work on it here. How about we sand it down? Because, you know, sandpaper works really well on rocks. Yeah, if I can polish the stone. Then maybe Saturn would consider trading it for the tank of gas. It's worth trying. Well, it certainly looks a lot nicer. Let's hope Saturn thinks the same. Okay, let's see if I can get him to trade it for the tank of gas. Hint, we're gonna Saturn. fail this time too. I fixed up the sculpture a bit, and now I think you're really gonna be delighted with it. How's this? Museum quality, huh? Hmm, yes. I can distinguish some softer nuances. The man has evolved. His delicacy in the surrounding environment is apparent. But he's trying to camouflage himself by blending in with progress. That's the idea you're trying to convey, am I right? <laughs> sure, exactly you bet. It. You understand my ideas perfectly. So, are you interested in it? You can have the sculpture, and I take your gas tank and... No. It still appears to be an incomplete work, like a house without a roof. When you achieve total mastery, we'll talk about the deal. Oh, all right. That's fine. This guy's one hard egg to crack. All right. One more step in our artistic masterpiece. And at this point, you just start adding any item you had to it, right? I don't think that... That doesn't make sense. I mentioned earlier, these three items here will never get used in this game. But I thought this one did. And I thought right. Alright, I don't want to give it up, but if the piece of amber fits in the hole, it might be just what I need to give the stone a more artsy look. Let's try it out. Now it looks really cool. Saturn's really gonna like it now. Carrying around the amber in our pockets this entire adventure. Okay. Let's see if I can make the deal this time around. Fingers crossed. Saturn, observe my sculpture now. Thanks to your advice, I think I've created a true masterpiece. What do you think? Oh, the light. The divine element symbolized by light. Of course, in spite of it all, man cannot bear his fragility and needs to create a superior being that gives greater meaning to his existence. That is the point, isn't it? Exactly. Whatever you, you want. Figured it out. Do we have a deal? Hmm. Do one thing for me. Place the sculpture in front of the door to the balcony. The sun will become the final element from which man imbibes the light that shelters him. Uh, whatever you say. Yes. Truly majestic. Don't move it. That's the perfect spot. Okay, then I get the take of gas, right? Yes, yes, it's yours. Oh, but there's one thing I forgot to tell you. <laughs> By the way, it's That empty. isn't any normal, everyday gasoline. It's concentrated gasoline that I make myself. In order for it to work, you have to mix it with water. The formula is simple. 
For every liter of water, you put in 40 cc's of concentrated gasoline. It is vital for the mixture to be exact. Yeah, and do you have any measuring tubes to calculate the exact amounts? Well, look, there's one small problem. Oh my god. My 40 cc measuring tube broke the other day, and I haven't bought a new one yet. But don't worry. Next to the gas tank, there's a one liter bottle and two measuring tubes. You can use that to make the mixture. If you say so. The tank is finally mine. And the bottle and measuring tubes? Let's see if I can use this to make the mixture right. Let's see, we need a liter of water? I'd rather ask Saturn. Hey, Saturn! What? Yes. If it's in... Can I take a bit of water from the machine? Go ahead. You can't say no to giving someone water. Take all you need. Their rules here are just oh, so bizarre. Something that can't be replaced like gasoline requires art. All right. Something that can't be replaced like water doesn't. Alright, we got... To the mark! Exactly one liter of water. All right, and now we have to do that uh, Die Hard 3 style puzzle to get, we have a 50 and a 30, and we need to get exactly 40. Uh, let's see if I can remember how to do this. Okay, I'll fill it right. Fill up the 50. There you go. Done, but that's All right, so now I've got that's holding to some halfway there. It's empty now. Okay, I'll. No, I've just caught myself in a loop here. Done. Hmm. If I throw out the 20... It's in. I put the 30 in. Done. But that's... Yes, yes, you're very good at this. Alright, I've got 30 in there now. The 30 cubic centimeter measure... Okay. There you have... So that's 30 and that's 30. I'm not doing this right. Dang, I used to be really good at this. Nope. I seem to have caught myself in a little bit of a puzzle here. So I'll tell you what. Um, rather than you watch me go through all these permutations, I'm going to go ahead and end the video here. And the next video will start with me having a solution. Won't that be fun? I swear I used to be good at this puzzle. I'll see you guys next time. Oh, uh, yeah, next time we will solve the Die Hard-like puzzle. We will communicate with alien life forms. And if we're really lucky, we will start up an antique uh, derailed train. And, using art, we'll find our way to the safe. If we're lucky, we'll be able to do all that in one video. I'll see you guys next time.